Well, it's good evening from The View. Um, excuse me for my absence over the number of last weeks. Been very, very busy uh, with DTM, British Touring Cars, um, and lots, lots more besides. Um, believe you me, it never rains, but it pours, a bit like the weather. Well, let's talk about a very neutral New Delhi. Um, bit of a shame, really, that the Indian Grand Prix um, didn't sort of um, reach a lot of expectation as we'd hoped this season with a very processional uh, race from Sebastian, uh, from pole, led from lights to flag. Um, but there we go. Uh, these things can't be helped. Um, but I think really things should be hopefully evened up at some point soon. Come on, Ferrari, pull your finger out. We know you're not using your wind tunnel, but I'm sure there's some more speed or more performance in that F2012. I'm sure Fernando can uh, pull it out from anywhere, especially. Um, right, well, let's get on to the questions more than anything, because um, I'm going to make this as brief as possible because I've got an announcement to make after this, and it's to do with charity. Uh, a chosen charity that I will uh, help out during the month of November. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. Anyhow, let's get on to the brass tacks and get on with the questions. Um, first of all, with regards to the front wings, really, why do we need to um, look at re-evaluating re them? You know, the, the, the front wing of a Formula 1 car has ev evolved throughout the last three decades. And things are going to get more and more complicated as they go along, or simplified, depending on what the FIA technical regulations specify, like in 2014, for instance. Um, and the thing is, is that Formula 1 is meant to be about close racing. It's meant to be close quarter battles, going around corners, going on the inside, going on the outside, you know, overtaking. And um, why should teams compromise on a design that they've had in in flux, you know, in, in constant evolution over time. And they spend millions of pounds a year on like carbon fiber composites, um, you know, the, the baking ovens that they, they, they cure, you know, they vacuum and cure these, these materials in. And then there's the amount of time that's spent researching, developing um, through CFD, through wind tunnel mock-ups, you know, like half scale models, that sort of thing. So you've got to understand that there's a lot of development that goes into this and a lot of time and energy that goes into it as well from the teams, some more than others. Um, but I think really, if that does happen, uh, it's a racing incident, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing that's, you know, uh, tyres are a lot different nowadays in the, in, 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 in the 21st century. You know, Pirelli have done a great job, you know, obviously changing how compounds are, obviously evolving them over time and having, you know, I'd say Lucas Degrassi, Jaime Algochoari, helping develop these tyres. So, there's input from people that have competed in Formula One, and it's helped. It's shown. Obviously, tyres are asymmetrically, symmetrically loaded, depending on obviously uh, g forces, speed, corner apex, uh, apex corner speeds, you know that kind of stuff. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Leave it be. Leave it. Leave it alone. You know. While um. Why why uh why. Why should um, why should we change one simple thing? Um, well, I think uh, coming on to the the main thing that's really really impressed me about um, you know, so it's uh, I think it's just really a case that you've got to admire Vicky Chandok, Karun Chandok's father, for being such an ambassador for Indian motorsport. Um, and having such emotion, having such pride uh, as a man that you know has really, really been a motivational force behind the Indian Grand Prix, uh, alongside people like Vijay Malia. Uh, and putting aside, obviously, what has recently been reported in the press about Vijay, he's done a lot for Formula One. He's brought a team, a national Indian team, into Formula One. Yes, it's based in the UK, but he's proud of his national heritage. And let's not discount the fact that he's done a lot. He's done a lot, for, you know, in his own way in Formula One. And plus, yeah, obviously he's had problems with his Kingfisher Airlines and, you know, jo you know, Johnny, all these sort of, you know, White McKay, all these alcoholic brands, you know, stuff like that. But you've got to admire the the emotion that Vicky showed uh, on that um, piece about the Indian Grand Prix 
and he nearly had a tear in his eye and he was very right to be emotional because he'd worked so hard, so diligently to bring the spectacle to us, the viewing public. And for us to, you know, in, in a way, say it's not the most exciting track, but the Indian atmosphere, you know, you've got the Bangra music, you've got uh, Diwali, you know, all these, all, all these sort of little trinkets of Asian history, Indian history, that have been encapsulated into Formula One. And the way that India, India knows how to throw a party, believe you me, um, the food is fantastic, you know, obviously it's very different over there than it was to what we experience over here. So to get a true flavour, it's a case of people venturing out and going out to the Bud International Circuit and finding out what it's all about. You know, forget about the racing, you know. Sometimes you have to look beyond that to enjoy the true atmosphere of a Grand Prix. It's not just about the racing, it's about the whole weekend, the whole spectacle. Um, but coming on to the race, yeah, very disappointed. Um, I didn't really want to see a procession, as I said earlier on. Um, but there we go, you know, that, that's a fait accompli and... Um, I think it's just really a case that whether things are going to change, it is a Tilka track. So obviously they're dominating the Formula 1 calendar and we need more variants. We need a bit more variety. You know, India is the spice capital of the world. Why not make the track to reflect that heritage? Um, but obviously it's been decided otherwise, you know. I think the most exciting is turn 10 and 11. It reminds me of turn 8 in Turkey, you know, three-corner apex at 5G, and a driver's doing 160, 170 miles an hour. Very impressive. Um, but then uh, the bonus question. Always, always a stumper. Um, the crazy frog. I did not want to see that return. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got nothing against Sebastian, but the, the crazy frog is in history. Um, past tense, you know. I think if I um, if I won my first Formula One Grand Prix, I'd do a Ricky Bobby, you know, shake and break, shake and bake, you know. Um, or I want to go fast, I want to go fast, oh, I won, I won the race, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so you've got to make it tongue-in-cheek, but when it comes to something like crazy frog, ee. That's where I stay, draw the line. But anyhow, my big announcement. Now, I'm hoping that some of the fan formulites will get involved, but you don't necessarily have to be a MoBro, and if you know what I'm talking about there, I'm talking about November. Yes, from the 1st of November, yours truly will be clean-shaven, and by the end of the month, I'll have a truck tash. Yes, I'm doing the full, sort of like Hulk Hogan-style handlebar tash. So, um, it's really... Um, a way in which, you know, if you fan formula, like, so, you know, obviously like Grace, uh, Tasha, um, Squiffany, Alish, uh, to name but a few, um, I can't remember everyone's names to be honest with you, um, in fact could my, uh, my, my memory can sometimes lax me by as being one of the elder statesmen of formula, uh, fan formula. Um, but it's really about recognising men's health, you know. Um, there are men that are affected by prostate cancer, testicular cancer, but then there's other forms of cancer as well. Uh, and what Movember does is that it helps provide funding for you know, prostate, can uh, prostate, prostate Cancer UK, uh, Cancer Research UK. Um, so for one month only, I will be making myself look a complete fool wearing a tash. So this time next week, you'll see the, um, the fruitful beginnings, I think, of a trucker tash. And if you do want to donate, or if you do want to be part of the team, you know, feel free to do so. It's uh, Team Goldie Movember. Um, I couldn't think of anything more inspirational, actually, to be honest with you. But Movember had to be in the title, had to be relevant. So the URL is actually in the bottom. But here is uh, the profile. And if you want to join the team, feel free to do so and help promote men's health. And for you ladies out there, you don't have to, like I say, you don't have to be a mo bro, you can be a mo sister, and you can help motivate us to keep those tashes growing for that whole month, because I'm sure I'm going to need some. Um, but anyhow, that's enough for me for Fan Formula this week. Apologies for my absence for the last few weeks, it has been busy as I don't know what. But hopefully I'll see you after Abu Dhabi, and you'll see the fruitation of this. See you in a week's time, guys.